So we're very excited that today we're announcing uh, that we're bringing the power of AMP to email. By bringing AMP to email, we open up a whole new world of possibilities for what, what can happen inside of email and a whole world of possibilities for users to engage with your content. So what is this whole AMP and email thing? With AMP and email, senders are going to be able to include AMP components inside of their email messages. So we're excited about people uh, integrating these interactive components like carousels and accordions to build these rich, engaging emails, um, but also being able to update emails based on uh, you know, content from external services. So being able to you know, show the latest state of the news articles or the weather or the stock prices inside of a, a news digest um, and users being able to take action inside of their emails. So why use AMP for this though? Why not use like JavaScript? Running third-party JavaScript inside of a user's email, as you might imagine, has lots of potential security, uh, security issues. So AMP is a really attractive option here because um, we're not running arbitrary third-party JavaScript. All of the documents are, are declarative. So senders are just writing fixed declarative documents that can be analyzed for spam and phishing and other things. And uh, we're able to, um, to, more, uh, uh, to better ensure user safety. I mean, will this be used for advertising by Google in some way? No, so the, uh, the AMP ad components are not allowed inside of our proposed AMP for email spec. Um, so the AMP for email spec is, is different from the more general AMP spec, um, specifically accounting for uh, uh, user safety and security inside of web-based mail clients. Um, so most, most components that use iframes and allow third-party JavaScript, like, like advertising components, um, are not allowed. Instead. So Gmail will use the AMP runtime, but it will forbid certain components. Exactly right, yeah. So there's a, a subset that we think is uh, enough to build really compelling new new emails, um, but keeps users safe. What is it you've done at Doodle with email? Well, we're a scheduling and coordination company, so we had the opportunity to basically extend our scheduling and coordination functionality directly inside email. So you can go to doodle.com, you can make a poll, and then an email is sent to the person who created the poll, and then an email can be sent to the people who have been invited to participate in the poll. Both those emails could be activated with AMP for email so that you can use Doodle features directly inside the inbox. So you can, you can, as a poll creator, you can close the poll and choose a final option, or as a poll participant, you could select a poll option and vote on it directly inside the email. So it's like AMP for email is Kind of, it makes applica modern application functionality available inside of an email. So anything a modern application can do, an email can now do, which is huge. So we can shuffle data back and forth to Doodle API endpoints and do anything that Doodle can do inside of an email, which is mind-blowing. I'm here with Seth Weisfeld, product manager at Pinterest. And uh, what have you guys done with AMP for email? Well, we've really looked to extend our product value into the emails with AMP for email. Um, we've been monitoring the interactive email space now for a couple of years. And we're really excited to see an innovative standard being applied because now we can do things like take our topic picker experience we provide for new users and we can bring that into email. And right in the inbox, people can select the topics they want to follow so that we can kickstart their personalized recommendations. It's going to be really powerful. And again, like the standardization is really important. Right now, um, a lot of interactive email is hacky uh, HTML and CSS manipulations that aren't scalable. So now we've got a scalable, standardized solution to be able to create really rich interactive experiences. So I saw this demo in your talk. Describe for us what the demo was that you guys created. So our emails right now, if they're pin recommendation emails, look like the site. Pins are laid out in a grid format, but they're just static images that click through to Pinterest. Now with the interactive email, when you mouse over one of those pins, it has a hover state and you can see a save button. You can tap into that pin and it's gonna open a larger view of it with more metadata and information, say it's a recipe. Now, rather than having to click through to Pinterest and see the recipe and then go back to your email and click through on another pin to go to Pinterest to see the recipe, it's all right there in the email so you can decide what to make for dinner tonight. Uh, and then, of course, saving an email, which is really exciting. It's less steps for pinners to start saving content um, and more signal for us to understand how to continue to personalize that content. So what's available now then? When will the whole thing be available for, for developers to try? We published a proposed spec on the AMP project's GitHub repo uh, for the AMP 
for email spec. And so this includes a bunch of the AMP components that uh, people know and love, with some exclusions for user safety and security inside of a web-based mail client. We are also inviting developers to sign up for the developer preview inside of Gmail so that people can start building and testing their emails right inside of Gmail um, and take a look at how it, how it all works. So we're really excited about that. Um, we're planning to make these features available to Gmail users later this year. And we're also working with the um, AMP team and the AMP community uh, to, to work with other email providers to have them adopt the, the standard as well. So developers could try this out right now. Yes. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Akash. Thanks for having me.